Hi everyone, welcome today to my art space. Uh, for something different today, um, let me explain to you a bit of history, how I ended up thinking about an altered book. Now, I haven't really been thinking about it much because I'm thinking it's definitely complicated. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. So a few weeks ago, what happened was I went to my dad's place and he had this book in his garage. It looked like a really nice book with pictures and this one is like of Rome. You know, look at that, right? Like it looks really stunning and I was thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I could make an altered book because I've seen that as a uh, an idea for a junk journal. But now after coming back and doing a bit of research, I looked at the size of the book Look at how thick it is. Can you see that? Um, I don't know if you can see. Anyway, it is quite thick. And I'm just thinking, how many pages do I need to remove? But I really like the feel of it. And I'm thinking, I don't know how that's going to go. And uh, not only have I got to remove the pages. I mean, look at that, those stunning pictures. Uh, there are things that um, you normally do, like you, you do pockets and, and you put gesso on it. It just seems really complicated. And I was thinking as a beginner, that's going to might put me off. So I just left this. I took it back with me. I'm thinking, you know, I might do something with it, you know, later on. And I went through my box and I saw this book. Clear thinking. If you have seen my one of my first videos, I showed you a few things that I purchased from the op shop that is really good for book pages. And this was one of those books. And this was a dollar, right? And I had removed a few pages from there already. And I'm thinking, oh, it's a little bit falling apart. But the size would really suit me because it's... It's small and it's not going to be daunting. And so I proceeded to find if there's an easier way to do an altered book uh, rather than pockets and folding and lots of removing of pages and gesso and whatnot. And I came across this lady. Her name is Karen Gaunt. Um, and she said that she never uses gesso and she doesn't remove book pages. And I'm thinking that's interesting. And she would um, try not to put too much stuff in there so that it's not too bulky. And she just proceeded, you know, painting over the pages. So basically, that's what I did with a bit of a twist. There's a few things that I added which she didn't. And I just... Wanted, I'm so excited to show you. So first of all, I also um, did the, the cover uh, using fabric because I wanted something different. And I did some stitching here, slow stitching here, just to see and test out how it would turn out. Um, and, and I layered this part and just made it really um, lots of texture at the front. And... Also, what I did was, before that, I washi tape the spine and I washi tape where I felt the book pages were actually falling apart in between. Because I did pull out some pages, remember, for my, for my, my journal. So I decided to actually do that and then started uh, painting on those pages. I mean, I absolutely love the paper, even though technically this is not watercolor paper. I wanted to use this book mainly for mixed media and watercolor. Uh, not so much scrapbooking style where I have lots of folding uh, pages and then put other things in it. I wanted to use this primarily as a mixed media uh, yeah, painting book and I wondered how it would go because the paper is not watercolor paper and I wanted to show you uh, how old this book is I'm just thinking whether it does say here yes it says February 
Um, hang on. Sorry about that. I wanted to read here. It says February, first published February 1936. And... And so I decided to actually use this, as you can see, the colors uh, on this book page. I don't know why it is, but it just is stunning. And so, um, and this is washi. I use washi tape on here just to secure the pages. And it worked really well. So I just wanted to show you some of my pages. I haven't quite finished. So maybe the, the rest of the, the towards the end, we might do some watercolor together. So these and this here, this writing here, it belonged to the person who actually owned this book and I kept it. So yes, and I thought I might just show you what I've, I've done. So with Karen, uh, the lady that I said she did an auto, um, altered book, but she, she has a different way of doing it. So she skips uh, a few pages and then she does so that it's not bulking up she um, didn't do it every single page back to back and so that's what I thought I'd do I, do, I didn't actually paint on every single page but every other page I did and so I tried this and I also put uh, bits of um, embellishments and ephemera uh, on the side of the pages and I absolutely love how it turned out. And she didn't mind not using gesso because she wanted the words to actually uh, pop up. Like she didn't mind having the words and I don't mind having the words because I think it gives an added texture to it. Uh, I might be wrong, but if you use gesso, that's fine. I just don't have gesso. I didn't want to have to buy it. So at, you know how I said it's every other page? So on the, the other page where I didn't have anything painted on, I decided that I would just do um, a cluster on the side um, of my bits and pieces that I had. So it's not too bulky in the middle, but the side, it was fine if you look. I really like that look. How it's 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 um it's got all the uh, tags sticking out. So that's what I had an idea of having the tags on the side and painting on the next page. Uh, just experimenting on colors, uh, using it as a testing ground uh, for. And that again, it's like a cluster, and of tags. And yeah, just, you know, doing painting exercises, I'm still fairly new and I wanted to try this um, as a um, uh, watercolor exercise. And that too. And so I'm actually following a book. Uh, it's a fairly easy book, like a beginner's book uh, with the watercolor. And that as well. And this is fairly simple, that's okay. And just using some of my stickers, trying mixed media, and using some stickers and fabric, and I washi tape that one because that particular page was falling out. And again, doing samples of um, different uh, shapes and different uh, colors. And this one is, I actually quite like that how I use two stickers and let them stick out back to back and it becomes like a little tab. And this one is a fairly simple one that's just washy. And that. Those stickers again, 
and just testing colors and uh, these are my Poskas um, actually it was fun uh, doing this kind of mixed media um, you know not thinking much and just doing shapes more uh, so I washi tape all around here and that was just a leftover Yep, so I tried washi taping all around this just to, to see if how it will look like with a border. Just little tabs. Uh, this was my fav one of my favorites. So she had an activity where you draw, you actually watercolor houses and then you posca over it. Oh, I, I had so much fun with this one. And my tab, that's a, I think that's, yeah, that's a washi in a sticker. And this is another one, a fun one she had, which was uh, teapots and Posca uh, over it. And I bought gold Posca, as you can see. I'm very happy with the gold Posca. It looks really good on, on certain colors. And these are just some stickers and I was as I said I just wanted it to be a cluster and a, like a tab at the end of the of the the book page these are trees yeah tree textures it's called and just more just using stickers and using these and more sample testing and and that's fabric so yes i'm just using bits and pieces from my stash and so as you can see it's not bulking up a lot because i'm only doing it on the side this one was an interesting one um yeah i don't know what to think of it actually uh, i was just trying some black and then with some spots just to see how it turned out again it's all about exploring and experimenting expecting really nothing and see how it turns out and that's a washi so i didn't wash it every single page but just the ones that are coming apart um, and and this was a fun one so i used a different paint for this one i used my monmart because it had pink uh, the only problem with this is it's a little bit chalky but um, it was a fun activity and I got I had some of these cool little animals and like this bird uh, which I had for a long long time and I thought you know what it's about time I put it somewhere um, just doing circles and and sort of marks and stripes and diff trying different colors and again this one is a Monmart one and I can feel that um, it's not Monmart watercolor. I'm not sure. It's just a, in a round container. I mean, that's what I had for a while, and so I just wanted to try the pink, and that's why I've chosen that. But it's okay. I mean, it's it's fun to do. Uh, and panda. And this was also sitting in my stash, so I decided to put that in there. This was a fun activity. Again, it's a Monmart page, so I can feel the roughness of it. But I decided to posca over it and just, you know, using lots of leaves and and marks on it. Um, and this is another washi, and that was sitting in my stash. Oh, this one is, I think this is, yes, this is the faber Castel paint, which is this one here. And I was really surprised that the purple turned out really uh, vibrant. And so I'm quite happy with that one. Um, you know, how vibrant it's turned out on the book page. Um, my washi. And this was in my stash. Trying again different watercolors. I think this one is a Faber Castle one. Yep. And these are stamps. Uh, I have them 
uh, they were sitting in, I mean, you know, I just thought what, how it's going to look like. I was wondering if I would stamp on the watercolor page with the background words. I think which I did a while ago, but I'm quite happy with that and having Posca and using different colors. Yep, again, experimenting. Now, don't know what it's going to turn out like. Um, that's uh, one of the hearts that I made out of a master board. So, or, or rather, it it is a master board. I use an index card and all the bits and pieces that I had, uh, which were lying around, I just glued them all on this index card and then had a template for a heart shape and just cut it out. And that's what was just floating around and I'm thinking, you know what, I need to find a home for it. So it ends up here. Um, this one I'm just trying again, different colors and shapes and actually quite like just this um, mixed media style. I don't know if you like it. Uh, it's actually quite fun to do. Um, and these are just my sticky notes. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to collect them here cause so I can remember them what they look like and I've got two here because they look cute and just the colors um, yeah I'm just all about making tags on this book and this one was a pattern a tan tartan one which was in the book and I I love how they've turned out actually so yeah it's all about practice and having fun um, Okay, these are my um, tabs again, uh, sticky notes, uh, sticky tabs, these ones, so I decided to put them here. Uh, this was another one that she had in a book, the cats, and using watercolor, can you see the blending? That's what the activity was for, and I thought, mm, I'll try it. Yeah, might try a couple more later on with different colors, and see how they turned out. And so I've taped that one up as well. Uh, this is another one with watercolor. Yeah. Um, using my sticky notes on the side as tabs. Okay, this is the last page. I ended up here and this is, I've just drawn the, uh, or rather um, watercolor the circles and I need to actually decorate them. This is a really fun activity, very relaxing and very fun. So maybe one of these days I might actually have a um, uh, have a watercolor together uh, video. And this one I was trying out, which I left last night uh, using free hand painting and seeing how the paint just works and then I pause it there on this page so just again testing and trying um, things I don't know if you've had um, any experience with an altered uh, book and I would love your uh, feedback about so I've got a few pages here which I will one day, um, uh, one of these days, we'll do a few watercolor together activity. Um, oops. Oof. Sorry about that. I was going to pick this up. And so I was going to say that um, I would love for you to tell me if do you think it will be possible to do an auto journal with this. And how long is that going to take me? And I feel the paper on this one is quite smooth, whereas the paper on this one, uh, it's a little bit different. The texture is a bit different. Like that one feels like it's got a sheen on it. I might be wrong. Uh, but how long is that going to take me, that, that big book? Um, have you done an altered book, but a big one? But I love how it looks. I mean, look at that. It says, World Cultural Guides Room. And, I mean, the fact that 
this that lovely map at the front um yeah, so I'm in two minds whether to start. I'm not brave enough, so it's. I think it's going to sit on my shelf for a while. But if you've had, you have any ideas at all, please let me know, and um, hopefully, uh, I will be brave enough to start on the Rome one. Or else, I was thinking I might get after I finish this one because I really enjoyed doing this this way and it's again a smaller book um, I might go to the op shop and try to find something smaller uh, not so daunting and maybe that might help me and help me to build confidence and maybe even trying some pockets and some alterations of the pages so anyway um, uh, thank you for visiting uh, today if you are watching. Uh, please like, subscribe and um, share with friends. Um, I want to say if you are you have uh, found any of my videos helpful, you know, I would appreciate if you subscribe to it because other people who may be looking for answers may be able to find my videos. I know people have commented that they have found my videos and how it has, has been helpful. So uh, if you subscribe, that will actually help other people find my videos. So anyway, thank you again. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye.